once we do this, you'll be out. I'll be out. We'll both be out. I'm gonna be there, 11.15, 50 keys. A minute late, the dealer's off. Just to Dutch. What does it mean? You're just picking up a bag, in and out. Time is luck. Mo, how are you doing today? Good, Rory. Good to see you, brother. You too, long time. Uh, Few years. In person. Nice, yeah, nice to in person years. conversation. Great. Um, we will get to, and I've already warned you, we will get to the uh, important stuff the in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> but I have to bring up the I Like to Watch show. Yes. Trixie and Katya are two of the biggest international drag queen superstar entertainers around. So I discovered. So I <laughs> had a moment of national pride when yeah. they. Focus their attention on you <laughs> on their latest episode. Did you did you see it? I did. Well, you know, you messaged me, so oh. I saw it, and I was um, surprised of that well, Tuesday waking up. But hey, it's embrace. It's a compliment. Two lovely dames. Oh yeah. It'll probably make walking past the George a bit more interesting on a Friday, Saturday. But hey, it's all it's all good. I think it's it's opened <laughs> opened you up to like a a, a different international audience. For There's a whole other world out there. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so. You've got a night ride coming out. Yeah, tomorrow at Diff. Yeah. Uh, at Diff, and then and this week on, on Netflix. Yeah. yeah. And this is going to sound, uh, however this might sound, so this could be Ireland's answer to Locke. Right, okay. Which would make you Ireland's answer to Tom Hardy. Well, geez, <laughs> completely different movies, but God, I'll, I'll take that. The Irish version of, yeah, what, a, what an amazing movie Locke was. Yeah, yeah, like I think just... It's, yeah. uh, like, I assume it was made during lockdown. It sure was, yeah. And it's almost a perfect fit for a, a lockdown movie because you know the, the lack of interaction, so it helps, you know, the people making the film in that regard. But for you, where your interactions were kept so minimal to anyone else in the film, <laughs> was, that, well, like, was it completely different? Tom Hardy was blessed because he had Andrew Scott and all of them back in the hotel rooms doing the live response, you sure know, did, on yeah, any given yeah. night. Uh, I was interacting with a CD player for half of this movie. So that was isolation in itself in the car for those couple of weeks. Um, but you know how it all came about was I was up in Ivy Fitness uh, four years ago. I met the writer, Ben mm -hmm. Conway. I'd never met him before, but I'd read a couple of his scripts. One set on a bus, one on a freeway, one, you know, a man, a rock in a hard place. And uh, we became good buddies. I loved the man and we started chatting about projects and we made a short and um, when Diff is over I'm going to do our next short with him. But just how it all came about, trying to stay collaborative in, in, in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. and I remember we were in the gym one time, we were in, in, in Ivy Bats, you know. Uh, the podcast will love this story. No, we're too. No, right? <laughs> <laughs> Where's this story going? And you know, we talk about stories and he'd say, do you like Locke? I said, I love Locke. I love the performances, I love how it's one guy who has a mission, has to get it done. So the pandemic hit and he had this in his back pocket. He mm -hmm. had um, Knight Wright. And then Stephen Fingleton came on board and it's the dream team, you know. And then they say, you yeah, want to do it in one shot. So uh, that was that. <laughs> See, that was, I guess, like behind the scenes, people, I think, might have an idea of like, you know, there's hidden edits somewhere. Like, like there's huge films like 1917 where sure. it is presented as one shot yeah. where I think audiences are clued in to where like hidden edits might be. But for this yeah. was how, how did they present it? How was it presented to you technically? Oh, technically just get in the car, drive and uh, I'll see you at midnight. <laughs> uh, shoot a feature movie every day for six days. So we shot six feature movies. Um, and we meant to shoot more, but one of the locations got shut down because it was a week before the riots and we had, you know, bottles being thrown mm. at us and uh, threats of our cars being set on fire. So it was quite intense and the out, outer atmosphere kind of permeated into the, sure. into the Budge's tense last night dealing, you know. And just in terms of your own kind of energy, because it's, it's all night shoots. It's yeah. all, I'm yeah. assuming it must be late enough where you're not stuck in traffic. Oh, there was no traffic, thank God, because yeah, yeah, the streets yeah. were fairly scarce, which helped his, the character's journey in a way, if you want to get deep about it. But it helped me practically, so I didn't crash into anyone. But for just, <laughs> like, constantly doing night shoots, are you just like, oof, I'm, at the end of that week, you, like, knowing one wrong take, one wrong line, you'll have to start again, potentially. Yeah, you, 
you turn it into your friend, you know, and all the problems became your friend. And mm -hmm. like, well, we've probably 10 minutes left, but we could talk about the problems which we encountered. But the main problem was, I, you know, we'd spent a year already in a pandemic. And the alternative was I could be twiddling my thumbs back home down sure. in Waterford. So when they present the job, the job is the job and all of the problems make it. So you go, right, it's one shot. OK, it's midnight, but you're working with a great team. And at the back of your mind, the character's arc, and he's doing these things for love, and he wants to leave behind his past life, and he wants to move into a life that's more positive and leave all that living behind. And that's something I could get behind, and I think the audience can. Mm. And we had a crew who were all about the script, you know, and Stephen Finkelton, he's, uh, he's a visionary, visionary director. No, like it was even, there's some beautiful uh, cinematography, in it, even yeah. though you think for most of it, it is, the camera on the hood of the car, I guess, is looking at you, but there's yeah. sometimes where the camera comes out and they, they make the city behind you just look beautiful. There's a shot, I think, of like the H&M cranes yeah. towards the end, and yeah. I was like, oh, <laughs> that is gorgeous. Right, Like, yeah. you couldn't plan that. Belfast looks amazing, and it's natural light, and it's nighttime, and very influenced by Michael Mann, and mm. there's references throughout yes. the script of Thief and Heat, and H&M uh, looked great. It looked like it really, something really out did. of Heat. Yeah. And the docks, and... Uh, it's almost like you go on a tour, come on a tour of Belfast with Mo for 25 miles, 90 minutes. <laughs> See the Titanic quarter. Yeah, because I think it was only when I seen you go past the Titanic Museum, I was like, oh, we're in Belfast. <laughs> right. It. Yeah. Yeah. And then from then on, I was like, where else do I recognize? So yeah. it was this beautiful kind of tour of the city. You yeah. see there were some parts where you stop off and I was like, this, is, <laughs> this could go either way. Yeah. And, and one did. of those was, and I'm curious because... When I watched it, it was, I just had so many questions, so obviously it's great that I get to ask him. The, the police stop. Yeah. Was that an actual police stop? Right. Because his face is blurred. Yeah. So you obviously didn't get permission or maybe to, to have them in it. But I was, that was an actual police yeah, stop we in the middle Yeah, we didn't of, know he was going to pull us over, Rory, you know. And yeah. It would never happen on your average day, but then it hasn't been the average two years, has sure it? Sure, no. You know? So again, you embrace it and you, you, you train like for a month on Zoom and a very collaborative process. You train and prepare for anything that could go wrong. <laughs> but then that's all well and good in theory, mm. but practically when you're doing it and, uh, you know, you're operating CD tracks and you, the PS and I are pulling you over every night of the week. And sometimes the lucky accidents make the movie. Yeah. And they give a burst of energy and adrenaline because it was, doing that movie was adrenaline filled. I got sort of, I kind of lived off the adrenaline and it was hard to come down for a few weeks afterwards. But I think that policeman, he, he sort of makes the film in a way. He played along with me. You know? that, like, that scene in itself was, for me, I was like, this is genius. If, <laughs> if, this is, if I'm understanding it the way I thought it did, that it was an actual stop. He, yeah. he was doing what his job yeah. and you as an actor are doing your job and yeah. reacting in the way that you think that character should. Completely. And I was just like, holy shit, like how, how, like. I, I don't know how it happened, but it <laughs> happened. But it happened at the perfect point in the movie. Yeah. You know, it was like magic. Yeah, in the back of your mind is like, please pull me over. On other jobs, you're like, I don't want to get into trouble, but on this one, come on, pull me over. <laughs> and you know that Stephen Fingleton, who's holding the camera at that point, you know he's, come on, pull me over. Pull me over. He's sort, he's sort of like um, the stories you read about in movie magazines or about the making of 1970s crime flicks. Mm -hmm. yeah, did that really go happen? And Stephen's one of those directors where he's a, a can-do attitude. Anything can happen. And you, you roll with it and you keep going and you stay in character. So no matter what mistakes happen, stay in it. You know, so that was exciting. <laughs> it really was. Like, I, I was, it was such a, I think I was, I was watching it actively anyway, but when that happened, I was like, oh. <laughs> like, it was that feeling of, I don't know what's going to happen here. And it was just, it was great to, to get that in, in that film. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah we have it. We yeah, have it. absolutely. There's yeah. other takes where Jared Jordan uh, gets pulled over, you know, and you can see me passing by, oh, seeing right. him and going, good luck, buddy. Was, that's I'll on you. you. That's on you. you later. <laughs> It was like kind of doing theatre in a way, because you wish your castmates good luck, have a good run, mm. see you at the end. Uh, really special cast, you know, because they follow you for the whole thing and they're supporting you, you know, interacting with three real people. Mm. <laughs> and they were amazing, amazing actors. Well, I was looking over IMDb, mm. and this year marks your 15 year anniversary from your first IMDb entry, wow. which is The Hidden. Ah, yeah. So that was 2007. <laughs> yeah, so I was in fifth, fifth year. 
so officially 15 years in the business now, and we've spoken a number of times before. We've we have spoken for time. Rosie, which wasn't just like one of my favorite Irish films of the year, it was one of my favorite films of that year. Yeah. Uh, and it was the same with Michael Inside. It's just yeah. fantastic. Uh, so you seem to have like a divining rod for picking these projects that people love and talk about. Right. But here we are 15 years in. Like, yeah. what is it now that kind of gets your juices flowing saying, this, yeah. this is what I want? Mate, after these two years, you know, I have no plan. I have no control over what happens. And mm. I'm happy with that. I've had an understanding where I can't control the randomness <laughs> of what happens. And I'm kind of happier that way. I mean, the hidden was <laughs> sort of <laughs> low budget thing we did for nothing when I was 17. Never really saw the light of day, but the randomness of then, my brother introducing me to Texas Chainsaw when I was 16, being over Bul in Bulgaria during the first lockdown, just random little things and I'm grateful for. Seeing what happens, mm. Rory, you know. I've no plan, you can't plan these things. No, sure, yeah. You know, I, when you start to plan them, that's when it starts to get a bit, uh, not fun. You yeah, know? I'm it, just grateful. it could lead to disappointment. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm grateful for the things and that I've got to work with some lovely, great directors and, you know, we just want to keep going, be, as, be the best I can, you know. Well, I'm happy you brought up Texas Chainsaw because I did message you while I was watching it. You did, like, you did. I was like, you did. You got an incredible death scene. <laughs> yeah, that's what you said. <laughs> you were the first person actually <laughs> saw it and text me. I was like, no. oh my God, your death scene's incredible. Gross. Um, this is the only clip of me they showed in the international trailer as well, you know. So. Spoilers. You're kind of like, well, you know, like, I won't be sharing that with me, folks, or your family. <laughs> Thanks, lads, for sharing that. Uh, but to be killed in such a fantastic fashion in oh, such yeah. an incredible uh, horror franchise, yeah, like that's that's a book that's bucket list stuff. It is, like, it is to you know, be hanging out with Leatherface and Lockdown One and uh, fighting them and seeing what a company like that is and seeing the the differences and the similarities to the Irish films. You know, it was my first American uh, film. There's kind of stories of how I was brought over there. And it was, you know, the boys who we were sitting down to chat about four years ago was the Tovas that brought me over there mm. originally. So I owe them a lot. I, I owe them one. And um, it was a, a lesson and a learning lesson but in how things evolved there. But it was also a lot of fun playing that sort of character, you know. Because the time frame has changed from the 1970s to suddenly it's millennials coming in. Oh, sure. And I really enjoyed um, playing an old school Texan because I love the Texans. You know, they get a bad rep in films. I didn't want to play like Hillbilly. No, yeah. You know, I, I enjoyed it. And, you know, the death scene. Yeah. That scene's great. And the accent was great. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because, I, again, I, it's something that I think Irish actors are so adept at. Like, people can't seem to nail the Irish accents, right. but the Irish actors seem to be able to nail okay. whatever accent they want, which yeah. is a real talent. And I didn't want to be that guy, the Irish guy going over there. Um, but the anonymity of nobody knowing what you're about and not knowing you was fun. Mm. You no, know, being on a set where I knew no one and the Bulgarian crew were amazing. But um, the randomness as well, like when I was in the Gaiety years ago and I'd go out for a smoke with me best buddy. <laughs> and you know, we'd be having a smoke and he was like, I guarantee you, mate, your first movie role in America, you'll say the words, you ain't from round here, are you? And I was like, get out of it. And I came back from a hiatus in Texas two weeks not shooting, and there was a rewrite in the script, my character's introduction, and I said, you're not from around these parts, <laughs> are you? I was like, oh, lads, we can't, we can't, that's two on the nose. Fate is just mad, you know, the randomness and stuff. And just one last one, uh, between Texas Chainsaw, and it's great to see this new movie, Night Road, getting pushed out on Netflix as well, because it will open up both this film to a wider audience, yeah. but also yourself right. to, a, to a wider, because like, it's practically two weeks where there's two big releases on the platform. Yeah, that you're it in. happened really coincidentally. Yeah, yeah. So, I guess off the back of maybe to Texas already, like, how have you had, like, are your Twitter followers to the roof? Are you getting stuff in, more stuff into your agent? Is a certain it, are you getting? <laughs> <laughs> sure. I, I stopped wearing checker shirts for a while, but um, well, no. Uh, yeah, there's been been a few, and uh, the character's gone down well, and uh, that's all you want is to play the characters give it your all and see what happens. But again, I've no plans. Mm. Um, Night Ride is something I'm really proud of. You know, the team involved. Um, knowing that it came about so randomly from meeting a friend in a gym, being great friends where you collaborate. I personally love, you know, 
Northern, Ar Northern Ireland has been very good to me with the dig and Dublin murders and, and meeting Stephen. Work has come through via the North in a weird way as well. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I love working with a director like Stephen, trying to, um, in a pandemic, for low budget, one camera, small team, trying to show young filmmakers what's possible with a low budget and sort of push the boundaries of what Irish film can do. I enjoyed that. Fantastic. Mom, <laughs> thanks so much. Thank you, Rory. It's my life on the line now. You understand. It's my life.